morning, everyone, and welcome to our remembrance service this year. It's online, sadly, as a result of the COVID crisis, but we're glad that you've joined us to be part of our community. This is undoubtedly the most important service of the year at Cargerfield because it takes place in this chapel, built as a memorial to the young men who are former pupils of Cargerfield and whose names are listed on the memorial behind me. This chapel was a project of governors, of staff, of parents and children to remember them and it stands here today as a memorial to their bravery. Our service will continue this morning outside in Ash Court and we will have a live act of remembrance involving all the children. But we're glad that you're able to join uh, with us this morning to take part in our act of remembrance and hopefully to enjoy some of the performances, the readings and to be part of our community. Thank you for being with us this morning. We are met together today in thankful remembrance of all of those who during two great wars laid down their lives for their country and for mankind, especially of those once boys or masters at Cargerfield. We shall commit their souls to the mercy of Almighty God and give them thanks for their good example. We shall also pray for ourselves. We shall ask that through our Saviour, Jesus Christ, we may live in fellowship with them and with our faithful servants of God who have gone before and that as they in life and death serve the forethought of God, so we, in our time, may be enabled to further their work until the fullness of God's kingdom be come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The reading is taken from the Gospel according to St John, chapter 15, verses 12 to 17. My commandment is this, love one another, just as I love you. The greatest love you can have for your friends is to give your life for them. And you are my friends, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because servants do not know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. You do not choose me, I choose you, and appoint you to go and bear much fruit, the kind of fruit that enjoys, and so the father will give you whatever you ask of him in my name. This then is what I command you, love one another. Your eggs are lesson. France, known as Flanders and Picardy, saw some of the most concentrated and bloodiest fighting of the First World War. It was complete devastation. Buildings, roads, trees and natural life simply disappeared. Where once there were homes and farms, there is now a sea of mud, a grave for the dead, where men still lived and fought. Only one other living thing survived, the poppy. 
So I'm each year declaring after warm weather what life, hope, colour and reassurance to those still fighting. John McCree, a doctor serving with the Canadian Armed Forces, was so deeply moved by what he saw in northern France that in 1915, in his pocketbook, he scribbled the following verses. In Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row. I mark our place, and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing, I scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago we lived, felt down, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up your quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high, if you break faith with us, we die. We shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Two years later, McCree was to die in a military hospital on the French Chanel coast. Shortly before he died, with the British coastline visible on the horizon, and the words of the poem in his mind, he is said to have murmured, Tell them this, if you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep. On the eleventh hour of the eleventh day of the eleventh month, the First World War ended. Thousands had died, but thousands more had been injured and scarred by the experiences. In Britain, Major George Hudson, a young infantry officer who had been decorated for bravery, was so deeply moved by the plight of war disabled, he knew in the world of police he seemed unemployable. He formed the Disabled Society, whose object was to help ex serving men and women. Another major factor was the foundation of the British Legion, LH, former commander in chief in France and the former parent at Carbonet, was instrumental in the founding of the Legion in 1921 to care for those who suffered as a result of service in the armed forces during the war. Whether through their own service or that of a husband, father or son, over six million men had served in the war. 725,000 never returned. Of those who came back, 1.75 million had suffered some kind of disability and half of these were permanently disabled. Added to this figure were the wives and children, now widows and orphans, all of whom needed help. Today's Legion has over 750,000 members and it operates some 900 clubs to reflect on those going to support those affected by the war, helping thousands of, of former Serbian men and women, as well as their families, as they try to rebuild their lives. Each year, calls for help come to the Legion from both the young and the old, and the number will continue to increase as British Serbian men and women continue to fight in conflicts around the world. As we learn more about the post-traumatic stress which is from the suffrage, so, so. the Legion is a major force in the caring community. It has been so for more than a hundred years, and it will continue to be so in the future. It offers those who need access to residential homes, the chance to stay at its convalescent home, support and visit to those in hospital, holidays and respite for the disabled and their carers, advice and help for unemployment, resident training for those leaving the services, support for small business ventures, visits to war grave sites for the family of those who have lost and friendship, help and comfort and practical support Finally, we wish never forget the great sacrifice made by all of those who have fought for our country, even more so in 2020, when we remembered the 5th, 75th anniversary of Healy Day back in May. They were both songs to the battle. They were young, straight of limb, true of eye, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end, against odds uncounted, and fell with their faces to the foe. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. 
at the going down of the sun, and in the morning you will remember them. Caulfield Roll of Honor, 1914 to 1918. Second Lieutenant T. L. Campbell. Second Lieutenant E. F. Campbell Cohen. Lieutenant A. D. Gibson Carmichael. Lieutenant. A. D. Charles. Lieutenant. I. H. S. Clark. Captain. G. J. F. C. Con. Captain. W. D. Cooper. Second Lieutenant. J. Lieutenant R. C. Cowan, Captain J. O. C. Cowan, Sergeant J. Cross, D. S. O. Major, A. and object. I. D. Dewar. Lieutenant. A. J. Dixon. Major. J. J. Dobby. Second Lieutenant. R. G. Don. Second Lieutenant. C. G. H. Donald. Captain. G. L. A. Duff. Second Lieutenant. A. B. Duncan. Captain. R. P. Dunpatson. Lieutenant. A. Second Lieutenant A. R. Ellis Midshipman W. Ellis Captain R. C. Finley Second Lieutenant E. H. Fisher Captain A. A. Fraser M. Royal Army Service Corps, J. H. Galloway, Lieutenant E. A. Valley, Lieutenant R. M. Galloway, 1939-1945, Flying Officer P. K. Woodsend, Sergeant Pilot M. K. Young, Sub Lieutenant K. H. Smith, Commander R. G. Stewart, Lieutenant N. B. M. Adams, Brigadier W. A. O. Smith, S Sergeant J. C. Marlin, Lieutenant R. M. K. Barge, Lieutenant W. Beckett, Sergeant P. H. S. Bennett, Second Lieutenant S. B. Black, Lieutenant A. T. Brown, Squadron Leader, 
J H Brown. White Lieutenant N A S H Brown. Major F W Clark.
remembrance, as we recall those who died in the service of their country. We also pray for the peace of the world. Guide the leaders of this and every nation and give them understanding of your will. Let the tragedy and horror of all wars be averted by the coming generation. And that the young people of today, including all those at Cargerfield, may be able to live in the freedom and fellowship of your kingdom. Give us, as we go through our lives, the wisdom and strength to build a better world. For the honour and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we end our Remembrance Day service, we should remember for a few moments all of the old boys of Cargerfield who have given their lives fighting in the defence of their country and fighting for freedom so that everybody in the world has the opportunity to be free. We pray in our memorial chapel, which has the names of so many old boys, for all those who suffer in today's world and hope that we, a small number of the future generation, can help to make the world a better place. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.